you see my cell phone? Ah, uh, have you checked the couch cushions? No. Hey. 15 bucks. Wow. Not there. Hey. Target gift card. 25 bucks. What? No way. Oh man. All I found was an old baby bottle with milk. Ooh. Bad idea. All right, so I have Nagaraja on the table here from Hurricane Games. Nagaraja is a two player game in which you are going to be laying tiles, exploring this temple. Uh, there's actually two temples, one for each player trying to get to these treasures that are along the outside of the temple, uh, starting here. Uh, let me show you how this game works. So as I mentioned, this is a two-player game in which players are going to have cards in their hand, and these cards are going to be used for two different purposes. The first of which is bidding uh, to try and win the particular room tile that is up for bids that round. So let me show you what these room tiles might look like. Uh, you will flip one of these over at the beginning of a round, and they may look like this, just an ordinary uh, crossway in which if you win this tile, you are going to place it somewhere in your temple connecting uh, roadways or pathways, if you will. And again, this is the entrance. You can enter in any one of these three entrances. And so you're just trying to connect different pathways so that you can get to particular treasures as such there. So I could connect to both of these treasures here. Now how I'm winning these is by playing cards. So I can play uh, any number of cards from my hand so long as they all share the same symbol here in the top left and right corners. Uh, you have to play at least one card, but if you have more than one with the same symbol, you can play however many you have. Uh, and there are a number of different symbols in the game. As you can see, there's, uh, there's that symbol and uh, the stick symbol, uh, as well as the uh, tile symbol that we looked at earlier. And uh, there might be uh, a couple of others. There's the card symbol there. So uh, lots of different symbols. So again, I could play both of these cards together since they have the same symbol and uh, the player who has the scroll is going to lay down their cards first, face down. And so that will be an indicator to the other player how many cards they're playing. And then that player will play down, face down uh, however many cards they're going to be playing, and then they'll flip the cards over, and you will compare the uh, icons here in the middle part of the top part of the card. And uh, these icons tell you how many sticks you are going to get to throw. So if I played these two cards, I would get two brown sticks, two white sticks, and a green stick. Now, uh, these sticks, uh, here they are. This is what they look like. So uh, the sticks have dots on them, or they have uh, the uh, naga lines on them. That's what these are called. And you can see the distribution of what each stick has on it. Uh, obviously, the brown ones have lots of dots and no nagas. The white sticks have uh, one naga and some dots, and the green ones have more uh, equal distribution of dots and nagas. So you'll throw these sticks and you'll compare dots. Whoever has the most dots is the one who wins that tile that was up for auction. Uh, the nagas, however, allow you to use the other half of your card. So whatever cards you did not bid with, that are still in your hand, so let's say this was in my hand, I could play the bottom part of a card using one of the Nagas that I rolled that round. And uh, this might influence how many dots there are, and so that can change whoever gets the room tile that's up for auction. Uh, they can also do other things that like let me move my tiles around uh, and allow me to get uh, more cards, as this one does, lets me draw two cards, and set many other things. This one here allows me to lay a trap for my opponent. This is the trap tile. It's kind of a way to block them off from being able to get to certain treasures. Because ultimately what you are trying to do in this game is you're trying to get these treasures 
And uh, when you've built a pathway to a treasure, you get to turn it over. And so I get to turn this over because I have a pathway built here. And it's get, this treasure here gives me five points. I'm trying to be the first player to get to 25 points. I have built a pathway to this treasure as well, so I get to turn it over. And this one would give me three points. Uh, if you get to 25 points, the game ends immediately and you win the game. Now there is a catch. Some of these treasures give you six points, however, they are cursed. Any treasure that gives you six points is a cursed treasure, and there are three of them in each temple. If you ever turn over the third cursed treasure, you immediately lose the game and your opponent wins. So you want to avoid turning over three of these. And as you can see, there's nine different treasures. So there's a 33% chance uh, that there are cursed treasures when you're, when you're flipping them over. Now, uh, these spaces right here would have an amulet put on them. And whenever you finish a pathway that connects to that amulet, amulet, you could turn it over and it might give you some sort of special ability or it could give you some points like that. And again, Whoever gets to 25 points first is the winner. At the end of a round, the uh, scroll will change over to the other player, and then they will lay cards down first. And uh, that player will get, uh, whoever lost the tile, whoever did not get the room tile for that round, is going to get to draw some cards. Uh, they will keep two and hand the other over to the other player. So there's a little bit of a drafting mechanic in this game as well. That's pretty much it. That's how you play Nagaraja. All right, so here's Sam and I doing our uh, obviously two-player playthrough, as this is a two-player game, of Nagaraja. And right now we're going to share our thoughts on this game. I'm going to go first, and uh, I really enjoy Nagaraja. I think this is an excellent two-player game. Uh, it may very well be one of the best two-player games I've ever played. Uh, for me, that, that honor has always gone to uh, Seven Wonders Duel, and uh, I, my, this game might give a challenge to that as the best two-player game I've ever played, simply because this is a quick, uh, easy, simple game in which you are having to cleverly play cards well, uh, know what your opponent's going to try to do, and then there is a little bit of a luck element casting the, the different uh, sticks and trying to get the, the points on them, but... Uh, you got to know how many sticks you need. There's that bet, uh, betting mechanic. Do I try to get lots more of more sticks or, you know, you don't want to uh, spend too much. You want to hold on to your cards. So there is that idea with this game that I really enjoy. What do you think about Nagaraja, Sam? Yeah, I liked it. I like it was very easy to understand. Um, the components are interesting. I've never played a game um, with the throwing sticks right. like that without dice. Um, or a unique take on dice, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was really interesting. It was easy to understand, um, a pretty quick playthrough as well, which I can appreciate. What did you think about the theme? This like kind of searching through a, a hidden temple kind of theme. Yeah, I like that. It was, um, you know, it definitely gave it a, uh, I don't know. Unique feel yeah, to it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that as well. Uh, is this a game that you feel like is one that has staying power in uh, a, a gaming world with a non-gamer? Oh yeah, for sure. I think that um, the unique it's just a very unique game, mm -hmm. but also not so unique that it's hard to understand or difficult to play. So I think those two things together make it for some gives it the staying power. Yeah, I think this is a game that uh, requires uh, some unique thinking mm -hmm. uh, to do well in, again, trying to uh, understand that bidding uh, mechanic. Uh, it, it is a fun experience. It's one that, uh, you know, is going to be different depending on who you're playing with. Uh, and each time you play, depending on what cards you have, it changes kind of how you're going to approach uh, that round, that turn, as well as whatever room tile comes up because, you know, that room, that particular room tile might ne not be the one that you need. And so yeah. you're not going to spend as many sticks, if yeah. you will. So Sam, let me ask you, do you think this game has maybe a little too much luck built into it? As you know, you never know what treasure tile you're going to turn over or you're never quite sure how the sticks are going to come up. Is there too much luck in this game for your taste? I mean, maybe a little bit. Uh, you definitely don't have a whole lot of control over... Um, 
which what's going to happen and so there's a lack of strategy mm -hmm. so i could see how maybe a gamer might not appreciate this game as much i feel mm -hmm. like with a non-gamer it just kind of it's nice not to have to sit there and think of your strategy you're just <laughs> yeah let's see what happens um but i can see maybe a, a gamer maybe not enjoying it as much what do you think well, yeah, from the gamer perspective, I think that is a, a thing that you have to be aware of with this game, that there is a layer of luck built into it uh, that you can mitigate depending on if you play your cards a certain way that let you peek at those treasures or let you, uh, you know, alter your sticks um, and, and hopefully you get better casting with the sticks. So I think it can be mitigated. It's not so harsh to the point that it's completely chaos, yeah. com completely out of control. Yeah. Um, you just have to play wisely. Yeah. Um, now, that being the case, you are at the luck of the draw from the card deck. And so there is that factor that's kind of out of your control. But, um, you know, that that's going to be one of the things that you just experience with card games, you know, games that have cards. Uh, that's just part of what goes into that. So um, let's get into our ratings on this game. Scale of 1 to 10, love to hate. What do you give this game, Sam? I'd probably give it a 6.8. 6.8, okay. So you're kind of average on this game, yeah, I guess. I think it was fun. It was easy to learn, quick to play. Just not, I don't know if it really had the wow factor for me. Gotcha, okay. For me, I'm going to give this game quite a bit higher mm -hmm. than 6.8. I am probably going to go 7.9. Uh, this was one that I really enjoyed. This is one that I feel like gives you a good head-to-head -head battle with another player. There are elements of luck, as I mentioned, but I feel like you can mitigate that. And the uh, layer of having to read your op opponent and play your cards right, uh, not overspending, and, uh, you know, just getting to those treasures fast. This is a bit of a race game. Um, for me, that provides good excitement, uh, a good tension. Every time your, your opponent wins, you have to kind of walk away thinking, well, I, I still have more cards than him or her, and I can get them in this next round. Uh, that's just a, a cool experience that I really enjoy. And so uh, I give it a 7.9 because of that. Sam, is this a game that you think would work well with non-gamers? Oh, yeah. I definitely think this would be a good game to play with non-gamers. And I think you can play with fairly young gamers as well, um, depending um, on their playability. <laughs> right. But I do think it's not one that you couldn't play with, you know, kids. Sure, yeah. Now, I do think you have to be aware that there are some icons on the cards that might uh, be a little difficult for young minds to wrap their, their minds around. Yeah. But uh, once you get over that, I think, yes, you're right. This could yeah. be a game you could play with youngsters. Uh, so I think we would both be in agreement that this is a game you could play with non-gamers yeah. that might work well. Uh, you would just say that this is not one that just kind of blows you out nothing, of the water. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, sometimes you just find those games. <laughs> All right. Well, there you guys go. Make sure to like and subscribe. Push the bell button so that you can be notified of our um, new content. All right. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.